<laughs> Hello everyone, welcome to the Vicky Bello vlog! Woo! Yeah! Woo! And I also want to greet everybody, Happy Pride Month. And because it's Happy Pride Month, we have someone who's a very special guest, my first one-on-one -on -one sit down interview with our newest Bello Baby and our creative director, two in one na talaga. <laughs> Mon Gutierrez, yeah! Hi Mon, I know you, you just arrived. Thank you thank for you making- Thank you for having me. I'm still jet lagging, but thank you for inviting me to your beautiful home. Wow, well, you know, I'm feeling so good because Mon is, I think, how do you say it? But he has such good taste and he really loves my home. Yeah. He keeps saying it's so pretty. So, <laughs> coming from him, talagang, I will tell Hayden because he's the one who helped build this house. It's really his creation, so I take no credit. But he's still in Paris. I left him there, mm -hmm. so I could interview you. Very beautiful <laughs> space. Very thank beautiful. you. Thank you for having me, and thank you for welcoming me back to the Bella family. Thank you so much. Of course. And that's it. This is where you belong. Of course. And this is like a homecoming for me, <laughs> you know? Yes, we're going. He's only going to be here a month, mm -hmm. less than 24 days, I think. Yes. Because you're so busy, you, he lives in Los Angeles now. Back and forth. Yes, back. Kuno. It's been one year and a half he's been saying back and forth. He never came back, but <laughs> this is the first time. You know why? Because it was all the quarantine. Ah, they make it so difficult, diba? So, okay. parang for me, I'd rather wait when there's no quarantine. But the quarantine finished like four months ago or something. <laughs> so, why did it take you till June? And he missed Jess' wedding. It's one of his closest friends I because know. you're so busy. I know. I'm busy. I'm, I'm grateful to be busy in LA without thinking that I would move there for a long time. I thought mm -hmm. I was only going to spend the summer there. But, you know, as the year went by and as the pandemic kind of became a little bit more complicated, I said, you know what? I've always played around with the idea of what if I lived in the States? again because mm -hmm. I went to high school there and parang for me the pandemic kind of pushed me out of my comfort zone and you know it made me realize you have to live your life to the fullest okay and that's what really pushed me to try something new and try living outside of my comfort zone and so far so good I was able to meet a lot of new people there now I have projects that are pending also based in Los Angeles so I'm very happy with my life in LA well I've always told Mon that I really really admire you you know for me Mon of course is good looking, beautiful skin, great party guy. More, you know, I would think more like that kind of thing. I said, Mon, you should teach. You should teach in Harvard. Social media. Because actually, Tony Gonzaga and I, right before the pandemic, we went to Harvard. Oh, okay. And, and um, who else? Garlic, Hayden. Mm -hmm. We did a course on marketing and then they had a, they had a part which was social media. Mm -hmm. And I said, Walang sinabi sila kay, ano, Mon. Mon is the master of social media. Because it's Pride Month, I, I asked him if he would be willing to, uh, you know, talk about your journey into being that's really getting out of your comfort zone yeah. uh, announcing did you announce what happened I don't even know how everybody found out well I did a magazine cover mm -hmm. um, for last mega year. right yeah, last year were you and here think, or were no, you I in was, the States I did it in, the, in LA okay and honestly it was because I felt like you know sometimes people would still ask me are you comfortable talking about it I thought they were walking on eggshells around the term of you know the if it's sexuality and I said you know what I'm proud of it and I'm and I've been out to a lot of my friends for a long time so there's really no point for me anymore to not talk about it because I am happy I'm content I'm in a state in my life where I'm not embarrassed mm -hmm. so, were you be embarrassed before well before people didn't make it easy for me mm -hmm. you know show business growing up in the public eye coming from the family that I come from you know people nitpick and people mm -hmm. bully and people say harsh things so no time then I was really just being more careful not to do anything that would not just embarrass me but my family as well you know your so, family is so close no? very supportive and that's why my advice to the people that sometimes message me and say how did you have the courage and I said you know what you'll be surprised mm -hmm. now once you open up the people that you thought would not be there for you will support you no matter what and that's what happened to me okay make me yeah. quento so I know a lot of Mon's friends Mon and I are really not that close so I think mm -hmm. we're getting closer now over zoom yeah. but because he's our creative <laughs> director and I have to see him every week but you know I really I've admired him from afar because of his brain, I think he's, you know, I think in your family, everybody credits that you are the brain of the family and creates things and stuff. But yeah. they're very smart. Like Rufa, for me, yeah. is one of the smartest people I know. Yeah. The way she talks, you know, I think I talk well, but wala ako sa ganito kay Rufa. But going back to that, I remember I was with Rufa about 15 years ago. Matagal na to. And somebody mentioned.
mentioned that you might be gay or you were gay and she got angry and walked Donita. Donita said something about I want this gay and she got so angry and she walked out. Yeah. So I said, oh my God, I didn't know they were that sensitive. So were they at some time your family? I think it's because if it doesn't come from me, then it shouldn't be coming from other people. I think, you know, give people the right time. I think mm -hmm. that's what my family was also looking at because everyone knew and I knew deep inside. But, but you never talked about it. They kind of just knew. Yeah, we never talked about it and I think they were being overprotective because, and I appreciate that from them mm. because yeah, I feel like sometimes, especially 15 years ago, in show business when you say gay, tapos hindi pa naga out, parang, you know, people make chismes, people make mean comments. Mm -hmm. So I think the overprotectiveness was coming from that. And you were naman, you, did you come out to your family already? Yeah, yeah, before. Uh, uh, yeah. Before? How old were you when you did that? No. Also late. <laughs> okay, also so late. Not, not too long ago. Okay, see, so you were hesitant to come yeah, out yeah. because you thought you wouldn't I be think, accepted. You know, ge our generation, you know, I feel like it wasn't really easy for us. Like now, it's so celebrated, and I think the people that came before me mm -hmm. to to really make it more comfortable to make, to normalize talking about sexuality in media. And I think there's still more growth, and I think there's there's still more room, especially in the Philippines, to mm -hmm. to lead by example. And I feel like I'm one of the very few um, who come from a showbiz family or who grew up in, in front of the public who's addressed that. I think there's still a lot of people in our industry that, you know, it's kind of like an open secret but they don't talk about it mm -hmm. because the media also doesn't make it. So hopefully with my coming out, I can really open the door, the for doors for people to follow through and, you know, live their most authentic life. So when did you admit it to yourself that you were gay? I think I was in my mid-twenties. Wow, how yeah, late then? Yeah, yeah. Oh. And how did that happen? And you know, honestly, I knew I was... You had a girlfriend, right? right? You had several or something? But <laughs> <laughs> I know. Meron ba? No, no, man, not official. But you girlfriend. would make out, make out. Yeah, I know, yeah, make yeah. out, make yeah. out lang. Oh, anyway. But I think it's not that I didn't accept it. I think I was just going through this like inner battle with myself mm -hmm. because I feel like society was making it so difficult for people to come out that time that I was becoming more self-destructive. Mm -hmm. I, I would do anything to not focus on my sexuality, focus on not coming out, not addressing the elephant in the room, you know? Okay. I would party, I would turn to drinking, I would do part, like I would just go out and like kind of distract myself from the real issue of like, hey, let's address this. I have so many gay friends and I really feel for them when they don't want to admit yes. because I feel it hampers their creativity it hampers their happiness and I'm like there's nothing wrong with it just say it right but and that's why there's people that are my age and people that are older than me that still have a hard time addressing it so that's why me being so open and being so public about it hopefully can inspire others to do the same thing and feel the same that I do I feel free I feel happy I feel I can do anything you know and, and even with my creative work I appreciate that I have both like the masculine and feminine side because those combined as what makes me really creative. I know, I agree yeah. with you. But did you admit it because you were no longer here? I mean, oh. did you feel some freedom in the U.S. and no. everybody, no? You know, in the, when I was in the States, that wasn't even my goal, mm -hmm. you know? But I just felt like it was because of the pandemic. I felt like, imagine if the pandemic happened no time that I was struggling and I was, you know, self-destructive, felt alone, didn't know who to turn to. And imagine if that was during the pandemic, you know, mm -hmm. you're, you're not only physically alone, but you're mentally alone. Mm -hmm. I wanted to be that voice for people that, hey, you're not alone. I struggled through the same things as you and everything will be okay. Mm -hmm. So I think I just wanted to use my platform for the best. And, you know, I was super overwhelmed once once that interview came out um, with the outpouring of support that I got from Filipinos all over the world. And even up to this day, I would still get DMs. Like, because of your interview, because of, you know, what you showed us, I was able to come out to my family. Mm -hmm. I was able to come out to my friends, to my coworkers. And even up till yesterday, somebody <laughs> said really? that to me. So, you know, I'm, I'm very grateful that I was given the platform that I had and I be able to share my experience mm -hmm. because it really inspired a lot of people. Who did you come out to first? The very first person? Um, my friend Ash. Hi, it's Ash. Yeah. Oh, you guys go you know a why? long way. You know oh. why? Because sometimes you, you tend to tell your secrets to your new friends mm -hmm. because you're scared that your old friends will judge. So you think, you know, George, Bell, people... So they were the second and George was like, why wasn't I the, the first? Oh, yeah. <laughs> exactly. George and I are Aquarian. We know we have to I be chosen Aquarian first. Too. I know, so you yeah, should have yeah. chosen yeah. her first. No, but because in the time then, it was easier for me to come out to a new friend because oh. no judgment oh. rather than an older friend. But then these are the things that you put in your head that now realize 
realizing, you know what? You could have just told anybody and they would have been supportive. So that's my big thing with this. It's like communicate, open up, and the people that you think will not support you will actually support you the hardest. Okay, so I hope you're listening to that. So stop suffering. Yeah. Yeah, just uh, admit it and feel free. Were you scared when you admitted to the public that? When I admitted to the public, I was in a point in my life that I was so relaxed and I was so happy and so content that it was more of just like sh opening up another part of me and sharing something that's a part of me. And mm. I was so comfortable with myself already that I was just like, bring it on. You know, a lot of people were saying, is it necessary? Are you scared that maybe some of your brand endorsements, you know, they're more conservative brands, so maybe they don't want to be associated. But I'm like, no, that means if they don't want to be associated with me, that means they're backwards. <laughs> okay. And I don't want to associate with them. Oh, you know what I mean? Mm. So, but that didn't happen. All the brand endorsements that I, I have supported me, renewed me, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> and didn't make me feel any different. Oh, ah, okay. Yeah. Well, so we, I just came back from Jess's wedding yeah. and everybody was missing Juan because we haven't seen him in three years, yeah, I guess. Yeah. And then when I asked why, Jess was very understanding. And she said, as she's George, of course, George will always <laughs> give me the truth. And she said, he's in love. Oh, I, <laughs> so please. So is it true you're in love in a relationship? Well, that's that part is true. But <laughs> the reason why I didn't go to Jess's wedding was because I was also very busy in LA. And she understood. I said, Jess, I can't go to your wedding to Europe for four days and then fly back and then go back to Manila. Like the flight schedules just didn't make sense for me. And she, mm. she completely understood. And I have to make it up to her somehow. But I mean, it was more of the logistics, but the love part is also true. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'm not going to ask his name or anything, but uh, yeah, we're, how long? We're, I... in, we're in different worlds. Okay. He's in the world of law. A liar. I'm in entertainment and, you but know. But actually, law now is entertainment with, with Johnny Depp and Amber. I miss the show so much. <laughs> they were all like, Mulan, <laughs> we're not watching you know, anything. Yeah, that's right. I was talking to him about it. I was like, I'm learning so much about your industry watching this trial. <laughs> did you watch all it? So you met how? Where did you meet? We met at a dinner mm. in Craig's. Was somebody trying to... No, it was just random. We had a common friend who was visiting from Miami. Mm. So that friend hosted a dinner and we just happened to sit beside each other. Oh. And then, yeah. was it instant attraction? And yeah, I think we had chemistry and like, you know, the connection was there. And that's mm. not something that you get, you know, that quickly and that feeling, you don't really get it so fast. You know mm. what I mean? And I've met a lot of amazing guys in LA, but that instant connection was not there. Okay. And I think that's why I stayed single for so long. It's because that's what I'm looking for. What, the ease. Oh, okay. You know, like no, no games, mm -hmm. no like chasing. It kind of just like all fell into the right place. And that's what the same advice that George gave me. She's like, when it feels right, you'll know it. And this feels yeah, right. Yeah. But you're really hesitant because, you know, he told me he's been with this person for six months. Yeah. And I said, oh, that's good. That's stable. And he said, actually, in gay years, it's like... <laughs> six years in gay is, years. <laughs> <laughs> what is it about gays that they're notorious for being unfaithful? I I'm not. I mean, I wouldn't know. I haven't dated a lot in my gay lifetime. But I think it's just a funny running joke mm. within the community. But I think now I've met a lot of people in, in the community that I look up to that has had very long relationships. Like, of course, Raho and Nix. Yeah, and Tagal you know? So it's like, I, I also admire couples like that who I can seek advice from. So career-wise, you know you'd be proud because Mon is being recognized abroad also. I've met a few Filipinos that are very, very supportive in LA, but I need to meet more. I think one year there is not enough. You know, in the first six months of me being there, it was more just trying to learn how to take care of myself, like doing the laundry, <laughs> cleaning the house. Challenge, my challenge. Major challenging. And <laughs> but you also, went there for high school, so you would think. But we had help. Ah, yeah. then. This time, I'm just there by myself. Okay, yeah, because yeah, Crystal's in Australia and she's sometimes she calls me crying yeah because, you had to you know, learn but you have to I had to you know clean up after yourself make your bed wash the dishes uh, cook mm. I never learned how to cook until I got to LA so but you know I enjoy it because it's growth I think mm -hmm. it's part of my personal growth and and I'm enjoying it it's now part of my daily routine and how about your parents how are you do you miss them a lot do they I miss, miss them. you actually that's the that's why I really came back is because mm. I really wanted to spend more time with my parents and of course my family and, and I miss my dog your dog talaga yeah. <laughs> What's the name for your dog? Presley. How old? She's four. Oh, only four? Yeah, 
course, yeah. you got her and then you left. You can bring your dog, right? I mean, but that would be hard. Not right now. I think there's a dog ban. Okay, yeah, dog. Yeah. Thank you for sharing. And yes. is there any message you'd like to give all the people out there who are not yet proud? Yeah, so I think that's it. I think for me, you know, you have to really seek out and open up and you'll be surprised that the people that love you will not change the way they feel about you just because you are part of the LGBTQ community. So for me, um, you know, if I can do it, so can you guys. And if you need the support, I'm just here. So DM me. DM. And on that note, thank you everyone for watching this special episode for Pride Month. Take care, everyone. Be safe. And don't forget to comment, subscribe, ano pa, whatever down below. If you have do any all the things. Yeah, do all the things. <laughs> and yeah, make your friends subscribe as well. Bye everyone. Take Bye, care. Everyone.